Um, next item, Miss Willie, 150.53. You need a motion to amend? Yes, okay, I have to. Uh, this is for the additional money for... Move to amend, please, first. Oh, move to amend with the contents of communication 150.53. Second. Seconded by Mr. Onishi. Go ahead, Ms. Willie. Um, this is uh, seeking an additional position in the um, Department of Research and Development for an ag specialist. Um, and it, it's, we've sort of based it on that it, it by the time it gets full, um, filled, it wouldn't uh, be by uh, July 1, so the numbers are are reduced somewhat in order to allow time for hiring. Uh, the key thing here, what I'm looking at, is um, someone to focus on preventing spread and contamination of harmful uh, species and organisms. Um, if it were only given over to dealing with the problem of the little red fire ant, I would feel that it was well worthwhile. Um, again, whether it's the coffee borer or the the Verona might. Um, I want to, I mean, I really feel that we ought to be focusing on uh, our future and bees and that. And at the same time, if it does happen, we're able to ha get the GMO registration and do that. That uh, person could help on on that position as well, although I do put in uh, money where there would be uh, f registration fees to help support it. But um, I think this is really important. I, I want to stress that um, a number of years ago when the Charter Commission came up, I very strongly wanted to have an independent, um, make a charter, I proposed a charter amendment for a separate ag department um, and just to really give leadership and focus there. And I did, um, withdraw that on the administration's request to let's just put money into more programs. Um, just listening, if you recall the issue on the Little Red Fire Ant, um, back in 2008 there was a, a proposal to deal with the Little Red Fire Ant that I helped to organize around the county and that passed 9-0 for the county to take on certain responsibilities and that really those were not acted on and this is um, spread a great deal um, and in terms of the bees um, and the Verona mites this is a critical problem I see the coffee board so uh, basically it's helping out um, that department I did add in some additional equipment here like for computer at the request of that of um, the director of that department so again there are two questions. Do we fund this? Um, it's putting a little more emphasis on ag and ag specialists. Um, the amount that I'm requesting is reduced by 25% of what it would be for an annual budget. Based on the assumption it would take about that long to fill the position. So that's my again I'd be happy to take this money out of the uh, carryover fund balance. I don't think it needs to be double what it was the previous year. So, but I have put it as an overall taking um, from the contingency funds. But I again open to any thoughts in terms of funding. Um, again, I just want to stress how important ag is. Whether it's not just important in terms of food sustainability, in terms of resilience, in terms of emergency preparedness. I really see the coffee commercial business dying in many ways if we don't deal with the coffee borer better and our whole bees and pollination and again so I look hope for your support again I'm open to any thoughts in terms of um, funding. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Willie. Mr. Kern. Uh, thank you Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Ms. Mass, uh, Ms. Willie, a question? Yes. Uh, Ms. Willie, did you talk to uh, R&D? Yes. And you, you did? And they're open to another position? Yes. And do did they, they feel that... They submit requested some changes in the budgeting here. Okay. Um, with that, the date today, do you feel that with that one position we'll actually be able to make that great of an impact to take care of these invasive species? Yes, I do. 
um, I support um, having somebody to get into that because this, this, the invasive species such as the little red fire ant, the coffee bear borer, it's a huge problem. It's affecting our island It's and they're, and they're spreading rapidly. And if the money's coming out of the contingency fund, I would have no problem. It's about $7,000 per person. If that money exists, I would have no problem investing $7,000 into somebody that's actually going to tackle those issues. Um, putting that money in for for District 5, let's say. So I just want to make sure that if we do it, though, it's actually going to be effective. That's my concern, that the money just doesn't go in there. We have another warm body there, and there's really nothing that gets done. That's my concern. If we can actually get things done, get the right person in there, I support it. If and I'm, I'm curious to see what my other council members have to say, but it's it's a big problem, and I, I think I, I commend you for wanting to do that, um, especially with with like I say, the little red fire ant and major issues. So, with that, I'll yield and see what my other fellow council members have to say. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kerr and Mr. Onishi, followed by Ms. Poindexter. Thank you. Um, this question is to Ms. Willie. Go ahead. Um, have you contacted the mayor and to find out what his feelings was and his input? I've requested to meet with the mayor numerous times and he's been unavailable on each request. So no, I did deal directly okay. with the department. Because if I'm not mistaken, um, we can pass this, but it's up to the mayor to, to I guess, provide or to create that position. Uh, maybe finance can come up, because I know personnel isn't here, so. I'm Deanna Sacco, Deputy Director of Finance. And Nancy Crawford, Director of okay. Finance. So if we do approve this amendment, I mean, what would be the process on the administrative side? Well, I agree. I, I have not had any discussion with um, the Director of Research and Development. And so, I mean, other than seeing that you are putting in this amendment to the budget, I don't know, I, you know, you're correct, Mr. Onishi, that we need to, you know, then the next step is administrative action would have to take place to create a position right. and so forth. Um, and then also, I look at this right. amendment, it, there's no funding for this certain position to help with solving these problems. I mean, because it's only for salaries, what I understand this amendment is for. So now we all know what the problem is, but now how are we going to help and solve the problem? And you need money to solve that problem. So we have a position, but there's no extra funding that's going to be appropriated to that person to get out into the community to, to help eliminate the fire ants or control the fire or to eliminate the varroa mites or so forth, right? Because that's what we need. I mean, I, I agree. I, I don't. I don't really want to take a particular position on this. If you've been speaking with the director, and I'm not really aware of what other conversations may have taken place, but I would say that. But I would say that we have increased the funding in the research and development between March and May. We made a significant increase in funding for the ag um, division of research and development. And, and my thought was that that funding may be available to carry out some programs. They've had a vacant ag specialist position, which they are in the process of recruiting and filling right, right now as we speak. And and so I don't know what, you know, it, it's difficult to say at this time if that person can um, take advantage of the additional money in the budget and start working on these programs, problems, and, you know, that may be adequate. Right. But then also, but the money that was put in to increase your ag, um, I guess, um, section was to help promote Promote to get to the farmers, right? To to be more sustainable, yeah. and I don't think like this money was allocated to help do preventions, and so that's where you know I kind of worry because it's the same thing like when I like right now I'm working with Parks and Rec about the fire ants as Miss Willie mentioned. Now, when we applied for this grant, there were certain things the county had to provide, and some was about having funds to purchase like um, um, poisons and so forth, right? And so coming this budget, I wanted to make sure that the department 
understood okay this is part of your requirements of this grant right and so when I because I was going to amend to get some funds because it was never proposed in their amend um, in their budget the Department of Parks and Recreation to have this extra money for pay for the fire ants um, research okay and so I was going to amend it but they told me oh no, no okay we can move around some money here and there and so they understand so that's my communication with them so that's why I never did do, do an amendment but with this situation like maybe Mr. Mori you can you know um, I guess enlighten us like with your discussion with Miss Willie about this new position and is there going to be funding well, if we pass this position it will, the, will there be funding for that person to go out and reach out and do what their job is supposed to be well currently Hello. Okay, sorry. Okay. Currently, we have reviewed our RFPs. The proposals all came in. We did have the review last week. One of them was a fire ant uh, proposal, and we have reviewed that, and we would like to fund that uh, position and, and to add education about the fire ants in that propo uh, when we do the grant. Um, specifically, like this position, I think this is the discussion on whether an additional position is needed in R&D. And I'm just wondering, is there, are there any conditions to this position? Because we are recruiting right now for an ag specialist that was vacated by Dai Dai. And um, we have not uh, received the list yet of qualified applicants. And I'm waiting for that. So we are going to be hiring so an ag specialist in our, in our department very soon. So this would be like an additional staff. I'm ass additional, but yeah. um, I'm just questioning but whether um, there's any conditions to this specialist. Well, are, are like to my understanding, only it's going to be specializing. Yes, like on like invasive species, and I guess with supposedly the GMO or the g genetic modification of being. Um, um, that's what but then but the thing is like see my question too to you is that do you feel your department is the one capable of doing like this like enforcements or into doing treatments uh, n no, no well not the enforcement I know the R&D is not about enforcing uh, if you're talking about GMOs we are not the appropriate department for that um, if we had to do any um, education on fire ants, that's what our funds are for. Okay. Uh, we do have funding, and like I said, you know, we go out and uh, review the proposals that we receive. Yeah. Well, you know, because I asked about, especially like invasive species, is that that you know the University of Manoa does have their own program, and and then the Department of Ag did hire Dr. Kaz, right? And uh, I know. PBARC is also doing their own research. So uh, to me, it's just another layer. We do have other organizations that address the invasive species. Right, and so yes, I don't do. see, yes. and, and to me, their major problem with the other, the, the other um, I guess, organizations or other governments is funding. And they cannot, they cannot implement the program. They can go and educate people, but there's no funding to implement to solve the problem. Right. We, yeah, because what we normally do is we have discussions, and I think you know it is our job to go and and be facilitators because this is our island, and we work and work closer with the other organizations that have the jurisdiction of working with invasive species. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. you. Thank you, Ms. Sunishi. Ms. Poindexter? Yeah, um, I'm not supporting this at this time because you just said, too, you're in the process of hiring an ag specialist. Um, and, um, you know, I don't want this to be like a hidden agenda type of thing because now you're uh, we're talking about GMOs in here and we know what I'm not going to talk about what happened yesterday but you know so I don't like I don't feel comfortable with what how this is going because it's it's kind of like a hidden agenda item for me um, I don't sit well with hidden agendas um, I, ag I agree with you that you're going to be hiring an ag specialist my feeling is we should hire that ag specialist and from there look at that and if there is needy a, a need for additional help with the fire ants or whatever we would have our contingency funds because we each have ag going um, on in our individual districts 
So, you know, we can look at how we can uh, appropriate funds there to help out also. So at this time, I am not supporting Michael. an additional... Oh, at this time, I'm not supporting an additional... Um, staffing person when they still have not even filled their ag specialist position. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go to Ms. Eoff. I'd just like to ask Ms. Amori, um, do you have a timeline when you expect to hire the ag specialist position? I apologize. I hope within the next month because we're just waiting for, the, I know the, um, the applications have been vetted and everything so it's just a matter of getting the list and from there we do the interviews. So I'm hoping within the next month we'll be uh, successful in finding a very good ag specialist. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Yoff. Um, Mr. Kern, or wait, Mr. Ilagan, you wanted to go? Because you didn't have a chance to talk yet. Is that okay? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do want to mention the Ag Specialist is a generalist position. You have, we have experts in UH Hilo. We have experts in UH Manoa. That's who they contact. They have a general idea of Ag. I'm a big supporter of Ag, and I want to see another position on Ag. I would love to see 10, 100 positions on Ag, but that's just me. And with this, I feel like it still needs to be discussed among the department and you, Council Member Willie, and um, work on it some more. Tweak it out. But right now, currently, as it stands, I'm I'm not going to support it because it's it hasn't been dis. I feel like you guys need to discuss it more, and I haven't gotten that far yet. So I'm uh, I apologize, but I will be going against I, this. I want to respond. Um, Mr. Can I respond to some of these yeah, before let, you go on? Um, since you're, okay, we'll come back to you. Let Mr. Curran go, and then we'll come back to you, Ms. Willie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Moy, hi. Um, with the, so the way I understand the intent of this position ever to be in there, it's actually to be somebody to handle the invasive species, which it might be a little bit outside of the ag specialist. My concern it has been, is there the resources and is this even really the right department to actually go out there and and do that? Is it the right time within the department with the resources and like I say, is, are, is your department the right department? For in the invasive species, like I said, I think you know, um, our, we can help facilitate conversations and work with the experts and the agencies to, to address um, the invasive species. Now, if there's anything else that's a condition, then I don't believe that I can answer that at this point, whether that position should be in our department. Thank you. Yeah, I think we need to go go beyond. I mean, I think with with even the current resources there, you guys are doing the education and getting the education out there and, and connecting some of the dots. I think we can do that. I think we can do that with our current ag specialists that we have coming on board. If we fund something like this, I want funds available. I want somebody actually be able to go out there and say within a two years there is a reduction by 20% of red fire ants. If we're not going to be able to do that, there's no point in doing this, and I don't see that that's possible right now. So I'm not going to support this. When that does become possible. I'm there every day. And with that, I'll yield. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Miss Willie. Well, I disagree with all of you very strongly. And I think time is of the essence. Um, you know, if we just, I mean, if you were concerned in terms of the GMO, eliminate any reference to that. Um, I started working on a lot of these issues in 2006 when the county ag plan discussions were going around in each community. And these were critical issues. I can remember in the meeting that was held in Waimea, one farmer said, if we allow, like the little red fire ant, and I think, he, I think it was uh, the mite we also mentioned, everything's lost. Everything is lost. And so I don't think we have the luxury. I I really fought for that um, wanted to, and, and I'm still thinking maybe we ought to go ahead and have a separate Department of Ag. I, I don't feel that you, you can be a full leadership in terms of Ag and also the whole concept of research and development across the board. I want to stress what um, Council Member Ilgon said. Is that and the ag specialist position that's being put in right now is basically an, an agriculture economic development specialist. And that's been, died. I really promoting the whole ag in our county. It's not, uh, you can't, I don't see, 
basically all of the things that you all have said if I hadn't been doing from 2006, I probably would say, I agree. You know, let's be, here's a good timeline. But it hasn't happened. Died I quit over a year ago and gave notice. And this position has not been filled in there. I don't think there's any, any excuse. And I don't see that ag development economic specialist doing the job that this position is meant to represent. And I feel you should be supporting this position. I feel we should be fighting for this. And I do think that um, Council Member uh, Onishi raised a good point. Okay, here is a person and where is the money? But I think if you look at the proposals that were made for what can the county person do, such as in the 2008 Little Red Fire Ant, we designed, I worked on that ordinance or that resolution of what could be done specifically. How could the county work? How can the county, there's different, there's the state Department of Ag, they're this. It's not getting done here. And I just think time is of the essence. I really think we ought to support this. If it doesn't work and Mr. Kern doesn't get the results by next year, I will, you know, we'll pull some funds or something. We'll do. But I just think that, that I'm just trying to be practical and really, um, it really just on a practical level, I don't see how this position and getting in someone to take over, basically the ag economic development specialist is like the director, like Dida, yeah. that is that overall off. position. So I encourage you to change your minds <laughs> and have an epiphany and just realize um, what what the history is on this and um, I do think by getting someone in there and having this focus we will really be able to make a difference so I wish you would um, support this and I do think it's worthwhile and thanks okay council members let me try and summarize where we're at okay um, what I'm hearing is the council members would like to see a, a, a and ag specialists focus on the invas invasive species problem, mentioning you know fire ants and and bur mites and things like that. That's what the council members have expressed in, um, a concern about. The question is whether this position can actually carry forward and do that with with the uh, amendment proposed. That's where we're at. And so Miss Omori had asked the question: Were well, there any limitations or or restrictions upon the position? I don't hear any restrictions or limitations. I just hear that this uh, is a position proposed by Miss Willie and please go help. Is, is that kind of an accurate, yeah. uh, simplified version of what we've been hearing? Okay, and we've heard about you know additional funds for equipment or supplies or things like that that's not included here. Okay, Miss. Well, there, there are. She asked for a computer. There's like an addition of a of a laptop computer that's been added in here, and um, that that would be uh, okay. helpful. Okay. So it's not. There's absence of. Um, Supplies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Your, your equipment. Okay. So I'm. I don't know who was next in line because we've been going around kind of a lot. So I'm gonna kind of narrow us down and move forward. Okay, Miss Ford. Why don't you go ahead then, and then uh, we'll take the rest of the council members. Thank you. Um, the position for which you're hiring. Could you just briefly give us some of their job responsibilities? The ag specialist um, works with the industries first and foremost um, to listen to their concerns. Um, it could be exporting concerns, um, anything that will affect the economic uh, impact of our island. Um, and that does include, um, and sh like, uh, the incumbent at that time it was Dai Dai. She was involved in all these conversations about all these invasive species as well. Um, what she does too is, um, let's say there was that vandalism papaya industry. She was the first on site. That's who she that they called. She's the voice of the farmers when they have any um, devastation that happens. She goes out there and, and then she comes back and then we try to react on that and try to help 
them as much as possible. But first, we have our RFP uh, process. So she reviews all the proposals that come in through this process. Can, can you give an example, a couple of examples of the types of RFPs? Are these grants that you're applying for? Is that what they are? Yes, they okay. apply for grants. And then one of them would be um, like the floral industry. They come and they, they want to, um, like the Philadelphia Flower Show. That's something that we would support. That's kind of grant that we support as well. So we can introduce the market to uh, uh, like the East Coast. What what kind of grants are have we gone after regarding invasive species? I can't answer that right now. I, I okay. don't know. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm really torn on this one. First of all, my district is ag, ag, and more ag, and so we need all the help we can get. What what I'm not seeing, in my opinion, enough of are applications for grants to help us try to eradicate the problems that we've got. I think Mr. Kern is, is quite right in s some of his statements about this. Um, I, but I've got to tell you, and this is just my opinion from you know watching this from the outside of the council and then being on the council, and Dai Dai was wonderful. As far as I'm concerned, she walked on water, right? She did. So I'm not knocking anybody about mm -hmm. this, but I really don't think the county has done enough in ag, and especially as far as invasive species. The reason I feel that way is because we all know, well, maybe we don't all know this, but I know that the state ag, Department of Ag, has let us down every single time, whether it's the cokey frog or it's the um, little fire ant, the varroa mite, the um, stinging nettle caterpillar, which didn't even come up in discussion today. All of these types of things, you know, they say, well, you can go to UH. And what does UH do? Nothing. You know, we go to the industry and we say, look, you're going to have to kill all your bees and we will get you the really cheap rate. One of the is responsible and they're busy on GMO or something else. Or it's the state and forget the Department of Ag at the state level. I haven't seen one thing that they've done for us that has reduced the spread of these invasive species one foot. And so I'm really, really concerned about relying on them. This is an ag island. We've, we are committed to agriculture. We've got, what, one person in the ag section? Just one. Yes. So there's part of the problem. You know, if, if all we did is hire this person and they just sat down and wrote grants, you know, getting everything we could possibly get in here uh, to make um, the 20% you know, reduction in 12 months or two years or something like that. It to me, it would be worth this money. But what I'm not, I'm seeing everybody talking the talk about ag, and I don't see the walk going on. We're not walking the walk, and I'm really, really disappointed about that. The fact that this Dai Dai's position has been vacant for so long tells me that we do not, as far as the administration is concerned. And again, I'm not picking on any person, but as a collective, we are not doing what we need to do to take care of invasive species. So I'm inclined to support this, but the question I have in my mind is what are you going to do with this person? I think Mr. Kern is, is really had nailed it down. What are you going to do? do? Is this person going to go out and spray for fire ants? No. We know that is not your job, but there may be something else that would be important. So if we did hire this person or give you the funds for this, what do you see that you want to do with this position to help bolster up the ag problems that we've got, not bolster the problems, reduce the problems, the ag problems that we've got all over the island now. What do you see this person doing? Well, I, I believe it, um, other than the, the one that we're hiring for, th this person would, would have to concentrate on bringing in um, grants. Good. Yes, would have to concentrate on something like that. For invasive like that. species. Right. Because, um, yeah, invasive species. And like I said, um, you know, we, I, I know previously maybe the um, communication with the other agencies have, hasn't been that strong. We, we need to really work on, on that and work together. 
and maybe this person would be the person that would be able to concentrate on, on working with the other agencies because collectively we do have to we don't we have to even worry about how it comes in to begin with you know other than just dealing it with the insects and the um, invasive species after it gets here so it's, it's a whole conversation that needs to happen right I'll tell you one conversation I would like to see you have and I'm unfortunately it's going to have to be with the federal government because they signed the treaties that allow those bees those infected bees to come through our airports and of course the minute they hit the tarmac they were all over Oahu and of course they spread and that seems to be a very big problem that we're having with the federal government because they don't seem to care we're a small island out here all, a group of islands and they don't seem to care about these things so if you will commit that this person is going to be working on act does that just happen? Anyway, that the, this person is going to be working on grants and ag and working with the federal government to stop some of the stuff even landing on our island. You know, we've got the most endangered species here. We've got mosquito. Uh, anyway, if you're committed to that, I'm going to support this because I need to support the ag. And we need to do exactly what Mr. Kern said when he first started talking, which is we need to reduce the amount of invasive species that are causing causing our farmers to have terrible, terrible problems. Thank you. Uh, council members, I'd like to bring up a point because I think it's pertinent to the discussion. I don't want to wait to the end if that's okay. I can ask, okay. Ms. Omar, I recall there being uh, a person in the administration who handled invasive species, a position that I think was funded through a grant. I, f I forget what her name was, but the, she handled koki frogs. And so you know, at the time when we had funding in the past, uh, um, there was someone that someone the public could see could get the materials to help eradicate koki frogs. Do you recall that? Yeah. Was it Karen? Karen. Uh, Karen. Sure. Sharoma. Was Sharoma? I think it was. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So whatever happened to that? That program ran out of funding. That was a grant program. Okay, because because that's the kind of thing I think council members are are you know directed at. Because what I would like to see too is the same thing. Uh, boots on the ground, resource person say, hey, call so and so, they can get you the supplies, materials. Because that program was excellent, where you could get the spray to help control, perhaps not eradicate, but at least control. So I think that's something that we would like to see happen. If if I'm hearing council members, so anyway, council members, we had that before, and that got not uh, eliminated. I don't know, four or six years ago and haven't seen it. Maybe three years ago. Three years and ago. then, yeah, we're still in control over the sprayers. It's still out in the community. Um, unfortunately, you know, we don't have the funding for the citric acid that goes along with the sprayers, but the sprayers are still in the hands of the community cooperators. Okay, so council members, so theoretically, I think if council members wanted to use funding for contingency that would help with the supplies and at least uh, for koki frogs, fire ants, whatever you want to be, I think we have some flexibility. Assuming, well, assuming the budget passes. If it doesn't, then we'll, we'll do other things. So, okay. Uh, I, I don't know who was next. Um, Mr. Lagat. See, the main intent of this um, bill amendment oh. is for the invasive species. And one of the things I talked to the rep for the governor is our state inspectors. Because that's what's bringing we needed more state inspectors. Mm -hmm. And when the rep when I talked to the rep, she said the governor is reinstating those inspectors. So what I'm the reason why I'm against this is because what we really need is what Mr. Council Member Onishi is doing, getting the resource for the materials. Because we got the equipment. Yep. We got the ag specialists that we're hiring in to facilitate those meetings because there's invasive species experts in the UH, in UH um, Manoa, UH Hilo. We just need the resource. Yep. That's what we need to allocate the money to because we got the personnel to facilitate it. We got the equipment. What we need is the spray to actually the what kills the um, red fire ants, what deals with the beetles. We need those materials. We need those resources. Right now we have it. She's going through the recruitment for the ag specialist. It, it will happen. Right now this is this money could be spent in the resource to eradicate it. So what we really need we're doing damage control. That's what we're doing. And the state inspectors will prevent future invasive species. And that's what I'm trying to clarify. OK. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Eoff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to support the need to beef up whatever we can do to control invasive species. And, but I have still a little bit of concern if, if the intention of what Ms. Willie wants to do is also something that your department is willing to um, work on. Because there was, seemed like a, a little bit of a misunderstanding regarding whether you can do enforcement or not. And if that's, the prop, and if that's part of the intention of this, um, pr this position, then that isn't going to um, happen. So. Maybe I can answer. Ms. Willie can clear that up, or you can um, discuss that with her in in front of all of us, so we know exactly what this um, position would um, do. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I I don't I see that if this position is simply coordinating, educating, raising money for grants, it's getting all of these. Uh, whatever potential uh, monies or programs are available, whether it's for the Koki frog or the uh, little red fire ant. This discussion and the comments that were made by council member Ilgon were what the conversation was in 2006 and again in 2008. I mean, and it hasn't happened. Yes, it's supposed to be, We and at that point, we had those ag inspectors, and it wasn't happening. We were not getting it. I think if we don't fund this, you can count on a 20% increase. We'll have a 20% increase. You know, I really, uh, this is critical. I mean, just if we, do, on Little Red Fire Amp, uh, it isn't, you don't need a lot of money for, to educate, to give, tell people how to test for it. It's the absence of that education. And if we need to get the grants, if we need to coordinate, there is not coordination. The ag person that's the expert is not on this island. You know, so I, you know, anyway, I feel that this is very important. I think that you all are optimists, and if you had been around <laughs> through these conversations from 2006, that you would understand and appreciate what I'm saying. And I'm trying to speak just as I, you know, try to defer to those who have more knowledge and have been involved in some particular issue on funding, um, just what's been involved in the discussions on the Charter Amendment and all of these and we're now just taking the little red fire ant take a look there used to be when I first brought this up three places three places in this county where it is it's now all over so I just think it's I look I think on the theory it's okay you know let's do this progression but really in the practical reality we need to do this now and have concentration I don't think you can have that even it no matter how great that human person is that you hire for the ag development specialist which I see and has been represented during a lot of the discussions is out there for our whole county for marketing for doing that can be down on the level of getting grants looking at take one example one of the new pesticides are in Decides is this new um, uh, nicotine based uh, I don't know whether it's a pesticide or insecticide but it harms the bees it permanently harms the bees there are these little detail level of um, that needs to be addressed and you know maybe we don't want to be an ag island maybe we just want to be a whatever island you know but so I'll shut up and I'll, I'll be quiet I mean and but I think you get my point we do okay let's wrap up the discussion council members I think we've gone full circle what I heard Ms. Omori say is that her department is not prepared to be an enforcement agency just so council members um, um, have received clarification okay final round and we're going to call for the vote so Mr. Kern I believe was next actually Mr. Oh, Mr. Onishi, go ahead. Yeah, thank Final you. Final round, go you ahead. Know, <clears throat> I don't want to defend the state, but then the bottom line was, like, you know, four or five years ago, even like maybe seven years ago, they had budget cuts. Economy was down. So, yes, they did um, eliminate ag inspectors, and that was one of the problems, and that's what it was coming in. Um, another problem was within the Department of Agriculture was... Um, like I said, funding. What happened is when the, the honeybees that pollinate a lot of the citrus or like other, like the mac nuts, when the mites came in, 
what they, they did is they came in to the farms and they eliminated all those hives. And supposedly they were supposed to go and re, um, I guess um, fund the farmers with new hives. But what happened is they ran out of money. And so each farmer had to kind of struggle on their own without any resources from the state, the federal, and the county. But the county was never in the ag department. They're only basically, um, I, I guess, to listen to the farmers or how to, uh, I guess, communicate with other agencies, right? And then you do have some grants where they can help out with certain programs. But yes. th there was never where they could help solve that problem that the state was doing, the Department of Ag, okay? And so that's that's our problem. So that's why I was mentioning that I, I, I cannot see pain for another position because they already did that. The state hired, like I said, these different people from the mainland and from Australia to come down spe specializing in, in these invasive species. But the problem is they don't have funding to solve it. They don't have the resources to pay for the pesticide, the insecticide. And that's the problem. Like... Like Mr. Mori mentioned, we had the Koki program, okay, the Koki frog program, right? And then there was a grant which provided purchasing all the sprayers and also helping with, I think, compensation of the um, citric, citric acid, right. right? But then the funding ran out. So as the funding ran out, and then also her her um, her department didn't have the money to help maintain. Right now, you folks had to scramble and get money to maintain these spares because we have it was a small budget. But what happens is uh, these equipment is are old right. already, and they're starting to break down. Right. So the cost of repairs are getting higher and higher. We just yeah. do not have the budget for right. it. And so, see, that's the kind of problems that we have. So we, you know, we create more positions like what the state is doing and what the you know universities are doing, but <coughs> there's not the money funneling down to the problem and which is to help compensate to eradicate all these invasive species. And so, you know, it's hard for me, if, if this amendment was to help provide funding to the, to what you call, to our research and development to their ag, to, to specify into invasive species, I'll support this 100%, okay? But right now, I cannot be seen, we hiring one other person and go and tell us the stuff we already know. Right? And I cannot, I cannot support that. Thank you. Okay. Final round, Ms. Uh, Poindexter. Um, I just want to, again, reiterate that um, I want to give Ms. Omori the chance as uh, our new director in R&D um, to work with us. And I understand from 2006, but we have a new director here, and I think we're moving in the right direction and giving her the opportunity to hire that ag specialist. And, you know, we've used Jeff Melrose. He's out in the fields. When I have problems with the farmers, I call on Jeff. Jeff is out there in my community all the time working with ag. So I have somebody in R&D jumping at everything that our farmers need. So I feel secure with that and with you getting a new person. And then again, uh, with addressing the um, need for resources to address the invasive species, we have our contingency funds if we, we if this budget goes through to help in those areas. The cokey frog, the fire ants, we all have that in our individual communities. And I would expect that the farmers and R and D would approach each council member in our districts to help them with those um, problems that they're having in ag. You know, and I definitely uh, want to go in that direction. So I am not supporting this um, at this time. Thank okay. you. Okay, um, Mr. Kanuha, you haven't spoken yet, and then we'll, we'll come back. Mr. Yeah. Kanuha, ahead. Okay, <coughs> Mr. Kanuha, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if we fund this, are you required to fulfill this position? To fill this position? No. <laughs> the question I have, because um, it's taken about a little over a year for the ag specialist to continue to be filled. It hasn't been filled yet. But not yet, but we. Um, and it's not that the position was not important. We no. have people on temporary assignment to deal with, you know, what we needed to deal with. And like I said, um, it took a while for us to develop position description because it, it was over 
over 20 years and then the vacancy happened. So it took, it took a while and I apologize for that, but we are going to get the uh, list and I'd like the opportunity to hire this person and see what we can do with this position. It may not be um, status quo and given the same position and the same type of work as it did before. Dai was great. But we need to look at the needs the way it is uh, in today's world. And, and you know, when that position has happened, then it gives the department a chance to look at what is important. And uh, and like I said, it um, maybe that one position is sufficient and we need more resources. Like, and then that's where you come in with your contingency funds to, you know, do the citric acid or whatever we need. Yeah, the, the point I was going to make was um, if we take this money away from our contingency fund, we can't use it. Well, if the position doesn't get filled. I mean, it's there, but we can't use the money for the resources that exactly what you're talking about. And that's the issue I had. We have these these funds for those specific reasons. You know, if the farmer from the Kona, the Kona um, wants to help, they don't have any money for the spraying for the coffee berry bore, or whatever it is, or down in the fields, you know, for, for the fire ants that may start in one of the parks, we could use that money for that specific purpose. So... I will not be supporting this this um, amendment because of what was explained earlier, especially when Mr. Onishi um, said earlier, and I, I completely agree with what he said. So that's, that's that was my reasoning not to support this. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kanova. Mr. Kern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is this is a, this is a tricky one. Obviously, it's a huge, huge issue. I don't think it's quite understood exactly how it's supposed to be done. Do we need somebody there to just to write grants to get money? And then what does that money, where, what does that money do? Who actually administers that money? How does that money get used? Or do we need somebody there that's in the middle p putting all the pieces of the dots together? A rapid responder that somebody can call and says, hey, I got fire ants in whatever subdivision. That person can contact somebody that has the, the resources or whatever the poison is to go out there and do that. Until that's really understood on what we need there as far as resources resources, the person, the type of person, because if we're just having grant, grant, somebody writing grants, that person is probably unlikely going to be able to fulfill all those roles, to be the grant writer, to be putting together a strategic plan of how to cover all these invasives, and then also manning the, the, the phone and connecting the... Something like that needs to happen. I think we should work as that on that as a council and with with R and D to come up with the with the master plan to to realize how, what what resources we need, what can we do, and what can we leverage and get the right people in the right place. I just think this is um, well, it's not premature. It's just not comprehensive. It's not thought out enough for me. Like uh, Mr. Kanuha said, if the if the position isn't filled for a year, then then we could have taken that seven thousand dollars and actually done something in our district and bought poison and got. But we 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 need to tackle this all the way around from our green waste issue where there where there, it, just there's every area we're we're finding issues and it has to be done and done right. So I, I can't support this right now, but I support doing something, but doing something serious that we're going to get serious major results from as fast as we can. I just don't think this is this is it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Ms. Ford. Thank you. The ag plan that was passed a couple, a couple of years ago, how much of it has been implemented? Um, we did the baseline study. We did the ag website. Uh, that's already been completed. Um, we have not established a Department of Ag. Um, we use that um, as, a, as a guide for us, uh, but even with that as a guide, there's other things that fall into the department that we need to address right away. But I do outside know... Outside of ag? Um, oh, no. Well, oh, yeah, within the department. Within ag. Right, okay. within ag, which we try to address right, right. away. Um, the one thing that I... S another, uh, there's a... Besides the grant writing talking to the federal government and see if we can get them to stop sticking all this junk in our islands. Uh, there's another thing that I think, uh, coordination between the farmers and um, the county to eliminate these things. You know, just we have contingency funds. We can't give those funds to an individual. We can't say, Farmer A, I'm going to give you.